Good evening, Facebook family and friends. Good evening, Facebook family and friends. Going through something in here today. I don't know what it is, but God bless you. Thank you for joining me this evening as, as we prepare to engage in our weekly devotion. We just thank God for being so good. We thank God for his mercy, his kindness, and all his goodness. Um, I don't know what's going on with my computer, my Facebook page. It's, it's giving me the blues. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to thank God for blessing us. Thank God for his love, his mercy, his kindness, and his goodness. Um, we want to continue to keep all of our family in prayers. All of our family who are dealing with the loss of loved ones. Uh, all of our family who is dealing with uh, sickness and health. Uh, the family who's been troubled by decisions or indecisiveness. Uh, all the family members who are dealing with uh, the care of their loved ones. Uh, we just want to say God is good and we thank God for his mercy, his goodness, his kindness, and his love. And we know God is a good God and we just thank God for all that he does. Um, having Facebook challenges this evening, my laptop is not cooperating, uh, so I don't know what's going on here, but we're going to try to work our way through it anyhow. Um, page 31 in our book, uh, Good to see you, Ann. Thank God. Thank you for joining us this evening. Again, I don't know what's going on with my Facebook page or my laptop. It's not doing right. It's not working right. But we're going to try to make it through this evening anyhow. So, you know, as you know, we're still in the book of Ephesians. Uh, we are in chapter 4. Uh, Paul is telling us about some behaviors, some characteristics, uh, characteristics that are appropriate because of the behaviors that are attached to the characteristics. Sometimes you can be a good character, and this might sound oxymoronic, but you can just have bad behaviors. Or you can have bad behaviors or behavioral patterns. And so what Paul wants us to do is align our behavioral patterns with our character. And if our character is the new man in Jesus Christ, is our, if our character is he who has been born again, then Paul is trying to teach us to put off some bad habits, some bad behavior, some inappropriate behaviors that, that don't line up with the character of who we should be and the character who we are in our spiritual birth or spiritual placement. <clears throat> So we have to be make, make sure sometimes that the character uh, is suited by our behavior and our behavior suits our character. That's what it means about much when the Bible says, uh, speak thou those sound things that speak thou those things that become sound doctrine. Titus chapter two, verse number one. But speak thou those things that become sound doctrine appropriate of one with sound teaching or healthy teaching or wholesome teaching. So we are looking to put on a character and behavior uh, appropriate one to another that identifies us as saints born into the kingdom of unity by Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. On page 31 of our workbook, Paul takes us to verse number 25 through 32. We're not going to read all of that. That's a lengthy bit of reading. And uh, we certainly don't want to read all of that. We don't want to be labored with all that reading. Uh, so what we'll do is just. Uh, we'll go ahead and just. We'll go ahead and just. Uh, look at some of the things that Paul is identifying 
for us in our behavior and in our character. Uh, because Paul says we are to put off some things and put on some things. Put off some things, put on some things. We talked a little bit about this last week. Uh, but some of the things Paul tells us to put off is falsehood. Ephesians chapter 4, looking at verses 25 through 32. Ephesians chapter 4, looking at verses 25 through 32. Uh, let's look at the Apostle Paul here. tells us to uh, lay aside falsehood, put on truth. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not steal, verse 28. Do not steal, but rather go to work. Don't speak unwholesome words, but speak words that uh, induce or build up or unto edification. Uh, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And then he says, let all the bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away from you along with all malice. So he says then, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Uh, just as God also has forgiven you. Um, it, it's amazing when you think about... Um, Um, what God is calling for us to do because sometimes in our saintly journey, our saintly walk, we find it difficult uh, to put off some things. We, we find it challenging to put on or put off and put on. And some of these things linger around if we don't give them a, attention that's a necessary or the appropriate attention uh, that would help us um, look more like the people we are called to be. <clears throat> I hope I'm saying that cor correctly. I hope you can grasp what I'm trying to say. Share. Uh, so even before we get knee deep in this conversation, let's go to God in the word of prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. We bless your holy name. Ask that you be with us, guide us, protect us. Keep our minds, even as you introduce to us of the things of the new man as we put off the things of the old man. Comfort every soul under the sound of my voice and those who are not under the sound of my voice with the comfort they need now during these grieving hours. Thank you for your love, your mercy. We thank you for Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The one who is responsible for giving us eternal life and bringing to us a brand new hope. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. So look, look at what um, Paul is saying here. Put off falsehood, put on truth. Uh, what? How does truth help us in the church one to another? It's a unifier. When we can look at um, when we could look at, um, when we can look at, um, one another in truth, uh, it helps us to stay together. When we can address one another in truth, not being pretentious, uh, not being, um, um, False in our words, false in our actions, uh, sincere. Uh, falsehood is not just in the words we speak, but it's the pretentious Christian or the Christian of, of two-faced or hypocrisy. And so the apostle wants us to not be people of falsehood, but, but people of truthfulness. Truthfulness are, are the ones that are bare. What you see is what you get. It might not be the best of me, but I have not ever seen the best of you either. So we're not measuring each other by trying to come to church and pretend to be all that or all that good or all that great. We are 
people who are striving to be more like Christ, even as we uh, deal with our Christian or our human uh, impediments, uh, things that get in the way, things that stop us from uh, being all that we could be. So then we um, so then we want to be people of truth. Then he says, stop stealing. It, it let those that stole steal no more. Uh, but he says, go to work uh, that you might have to give to others. The working Christian, the Christian that can produce. Uh, stealing here is a tricky word, even in the, the Bible usage in this context. Uh, because Jesus called the person who comes to the kingdom or tries, attempts to come into the kingdom of the grace of God. He says, Anyone that comes in in any other way is, is a robber and a thief. You can only come into the kingdom or into the grace of God through and by Jesus Christ. Christ says anyone that comes in in any other fashion is but a robber or a thief. Now the apostle Paul comes back here and says, uh, don't steal anymore, but rather work, labor, so that you may have something to give unto others. When we are not mature and we were kind of small minded, we might just only think about those who steal monies, those who steal candies, those who pick up things that do not belong to them. And absolutely, that's a no, no. So he is identifying that type of theft also. But have you ever thought about uh, the, the, the thieving that goes on when you when you come into the kingdom and you, and you take all of the blessings of God and the, the blessings of the fellowship of the saints and the blessings of, of just kingdom living and you take and you take and you take, but you never give anything back. That's a form of theft. Um, when you don't give back, that which you have been given. He said, rather let every man labor that he may have to distribute to others. When you're working in the kingdom, you have something to contribute. You have something to offer. You have something to share with other people. You have something to uh, cast upon other people. Uh, you have a goodness. And when you're overwhelmed and when you're tired the bible says do not grow weary and well doing for in due season you shall reap a reward so if you don't grow weary and well doing then you're not stealing a lot of people come to worship service they come to occasions and meetings just like this here praying to god that we will soon be gathered in the physical presence of our wednesday night devotion that's what we're working toward. We're working toward being out together physically on these Wednesday nights. And I'm sure praying, I'm hoping that you come out to be with us. Well, we had such a marvelous time, 25, 30 people when we were gathered together on our Wednesday night of physical gatherings. So we're really looking to come back out on Wednesday nights and fellowship with one another. So the Apostle Paul said, let those that steal, steal no more, rather let them labor so that they may have something to give to others. Not just the picking up of things that do not belong to you, not just the borrowing from people or taking from people, but the stealing of time, the stealing of love, the stealing of shoulders to lean on and cry out and pour out to. And you do all of these things but you don't build yourself up so you can give these things back to other people. And, and the apostle says work so that you can give, not just financially, not just in the tangible world. Yes, that is included also in the thought, but the completion of the thought is you're building yourself up so that you might have something to give to others. In Galatians 6, the Bible talks about uh, restoring those who are overtaken in the fall, considering yourself, uh, bearing one another's burdens. But then he comes back and says, and every man should bear his own burden so that he might be 
found worthy and have something to joy and boast in when he has done what he is supposed to do. So part of my contribution to the family united in Christ is to have something to give. Not always money, but it does not ignore money. Not always the tangible, but it does not ignore the tangible. So when we're talking about laboring and not stealing, don't be a taker. I, I know a lot of you have friends, and a lot of times you have friends that just take, just take. They bleed you dry emotionally, financially, mentally. They just exhaust you of all that you have. Those are takers. Those are thieves. They steal from you because they have nothing to deposit back into you. They never have anything to put back into you. No deposits ever made. They just continually uh, withdrawing. So all withdrawals without uh, imparting or depositing is theft. So the apostle Paul says, stop stealing. Stop stealing and uh, labor so that you can give to others also. Look what he says. Look what he says next. He says, when you stop stealing, verse number 29, let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth. Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth. Uh, what's an unwholesome word? An unwholesome word would be anything that does not validate. See, we live in a time because the world says you don't need anyone to validate you. God validates you. And that's an absolutely true. That's an absolute truth. God validates us. We don't need other people to make us be who we are. Yet, it is our responsibility to build each other up in the most holy faith. It's our responsibility to strengthen one another. It's our duty to hold each other up in times when we need to be held up with words of encouragement, with, with words of endorsement with words of validation <laughs> with words of inclusion and these are responsibilities but when we walk around putting people down or being judgmental and putting strains and weights and yokes about their necks then these are unwholesome words jesus said a woe unto the man who who, who, who tells his brother Raka or he's worthless or he's no good. Uh, those are damnable words by God, not by men. And I'm using biblical uh, words here. These are, those are words when you put people down and you count people out and, and you trounce them with your words or you're talking about things that you ought not talk about. One of the most Hurtful things in the in the Lord's kingdom, not not this church, that other church around the corner. One of the most hurtful things in the kingdom is for people inside the house to talk about other people inside the house. People inside the house talking about people that is not in the house. People who don't even bother to come in the house talking about people who do who are in the house L let me say that again because i know you missed it i might be going a little bit too fast for you one of the most hurtful things in the unity of the church is misappropriated misspoken words people in the church people in the gathering talking about people in the gathering that's hurtful that's unwholesome Talking about their business, that's unwholesome. Talking about their families, that's unwholesome. Talking about their misfortunes, that's unwholesome. Talking about their lineage or their or their uh, genealogy, that's unwholesome. And so we have people in the house 
speaking unwholesome words to people in the house, that's not good. Paul says, put that off. Then you have people in the house who are talking about would-be saints that are not in the house. That's unwholesome. Uh, nobody wants to be in the church and you're talking about somebody that maybe should be there or could be there, but maybe instead of talking about them, maybe it's the time to pray for them. Uh, stop talking and start praying. Uh, stop talking unwholesome words and start encouraging. Start lifting. Start building. Start. Watch what the Hebrew writer says. Hebrew, the Hebrew writer says a very powerful word, and I think it's in Hebrews chapter 10. He says, Hebrews chapter 10, y'all know the verse, verse number 24. He says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good works. Let us consider one another. King James says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Consider. These are wholesome words. These are good words. These are words that, that build up the kingdom. These are words that help us to grow. So we, we, don't, we don't talk about people. We build people up. We don't put people down. We pick people up. We don't walk on people. <laughs> we walk with people. <laughs> We don't talk about people. We talk with people. And, we, and these are just some of the things that has got to be put off. Paul says, put these things off and, and put on good words, words of edification. But I want you to pay attention to this verse because I don't want you to miss something that's very critical. He says, listen to me. Let no, I'm in verse 29, Ephesians chapter 4. Do not let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only a word that's good for edification, edification according to the need of the moment, so that it would give grace to those he, that hear. This is, this is powerful. Please don't miss this, church. Only speak words of edification according to the need in the moment so that whatever you're speaking to edification it gives grace to those who hear oh man that's that's a timely word a, a fitting word some of the things we say could be to build people up it could be to strengthen people and i know we say bold things you know christians are some of the boldest people in the world <laughs> So we say, I'm, I'm just going to tell them to their face. So I'm not talking about them behind their back. And what you have to tell them to their face, it might be good. But the question is and must be answered, is it expedient? Is it the right time? Does it fit the occasion? And will what you have to share, will it make them better under the grace that Christ provides. Y'all not paying attention to this because somebody going to go right and do this and come back and say, well, I just had to tell them so I, didn't talk, I wasn't talking about them. If it's not expedient and it doesn't provide their ear with a place of grace from Jesus Christ, then even though you meant it for good, the enemy is now able to use it for evil. You meant it for good. The enemy is able to take it for evil. Paul says, let not your good be evil spoken of. So when the writer, Paul says right here, make sure you're speaking edification according to the need of the moment so that what you're sharing while you're building them up Provides them with a space of grace. Some things are better left unsaid. Sometimes we have to use words, but when we're strengthening one another, there, a conversation must take place. We've got to learn 
how to use the Holy Spirit and the strength of the Holy Spirit and the strength of the Holy Spirit church. The strength and the power of the Holy Spirit is not just truth, but it's grace. Oh, my God. Yes, that's what I'm saying, Jackie. We mean good, but is it really good? Did it fit at that time? I know I shouldn't have slept with her. I, she knows she shouldn't have had a baby. But is that what you're telling them at that moment in time? It, it, they know they got angry and, and a few words came out that they thought were long gone. But is that the time? Does that provide them with grace? Truth. The, let, me, let me share this with you. Now, I, I want you to catch this. Write this down. The strength and the power of the Holy Spirit in us is not just the word of truth. Oh my God, I hope you catch this. But it's grace. The Bible says, for the law, John chapter 1, came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It's okay to speak truth, but it's got to bear grace. <laughs> it's got to be of grace. It's okay to speak truth. It's okay to have that tough conversation. It's okay to build them up in power. But they have got to be able to hear grace, people. They got to be able to hear grace. Or else it's just law. You say, well, I told them it was right. I just told them the word of God. Yes, you did. And so did Moses. Moses gave them all the law. But the Bible says grace and truth, truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. So the word that we're spitting to people when we're building them up, the timeliness will determine how much grace goes with the instruction. Paul says, all things to the church of Corinth are lawful to me, but all things edify not. Then he comes back and says, all things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. You've got to determine what's expedient and what edifies. And you do that by the grace of God and by the direction of the Holy Spirit. You don't pick and choose. You don't decide. Move as God moves, just like that. And you just got to hold on to God and move not because you feel like it. Move because the wisdom of God encourages you to move. And if you're listening to the Holy Spirit, he will tell you when to be still and be quiet. He will tell you when to be still and be quiet if you're listening to the Holy Spirit. If you're listening to him, that's his job, to guide you into all truth. And you can't be all truth by the Holy Spirit if it's not attached to grace. It's got to be attached to grace. And that's key in that whole verse right there. Do not let unwholesome words come out of your mouth, but words that are good for edification, but appropriate for the moment so that grace is giving to those who hear. Said Jesus the Christ to the woman caught in adultery. He never argued if she was caught in adultery. That was fact. Some theologians, some biblical historians would say that according to some accounts that the woman was thrown before Jesus naked. He's in Sunday school. <laughs> Jesus is teaching Sunday school and they drag a naked woman into his Sunday school and say, Lord, we've caught her in adultery. Jesus says, OK, whoever hears without sin, cast the first stone. The Bible says he knelt down and wrote some things. And those things that he wrote is always unmentioned and nobody knows what he wrote. But a lot of conjecture surrounds the thoughts. Uh, some say that when Jesus knelt down and wrote in the ground, he started with the oldest to the youngest, writing down their names 
and he spoke to them. Then they went back to the ground and then he said by their names, he wrote down their sins. <laughs> so he didn't call them out. He wrote down their names and then he wrote down their sin. This conjecture is not biblical. Now here's this naked woman here caught in adultery. And they're wanting Jesus to uh, condemn her. No doubt she's guilty. Jesus knows it. She knows it. They know it. Uh, but the Bible says one by one from the oldest to the youngest, they dropped their rocks and they went away. The woman fearing condemnation, already burdened by humiliation. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me right there. The woman in her condemnation, already swallowed up in humiliation. She lifts her head and Jesus says, woman, where are your accusers? She said, I don't see any. They're gone. Watch this. Neither do I. Go and sin no more. I know you sin. You know you sin. That's not even anything we have to talk about. But grace says go and sin no more. Words of edification, wholesome words, truthful words with edification in them. Timely, fit, building her up at a, her worst moment. That's what it's all about, church. That's what it's all about. We got to know how to build people up the right way at the right time with the right word. That's what we're doing here at Greater Heights. We're reaching for new heights. How y'all like our new mission, our new slogan? Y'all like our new word, go and sin no more. Come on, Sister Mary Cow. <laughs> That's what the Lord said. That's grace and truth at the same time. Grace and truth at the same time. Then he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Don't grieve. Y'all like our new slogan? Those that believe on me, greater works than these they shall do because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We're reaching for this kind of conversation. We're going to strive. We're going to strive. We're going to be able to talk to each other about sinful things and, and ungodly things. But we're going to strive to build each other up, build each other up. We need the person that's standing beside us in the battle needs to be strengthened by one another. See, it's easy to fight together. It's easy to go out to war. It's easy to suffer the casualties. It's easy to take some lumps and bruises when you know the person standing beside you loves you. When the person standing beside you loves you and you know it, you'll fight with them and you'll fight for them. That's why we're reaching for greater heights because we want to fight this fight together. We want to be able to stand together. We ought to be able to sit down and tell each other some hard things and do it in such love that when you're telling me something great about me and I don't want to hear it, I can hear it because I know you love me. I don't have to hear you say, oh, Brother Kevin, you know I love you, but I have to tell you this. You don't have to preface the conversation with that because I know you love me because I know you and I together are reaching for greater heights. See, that's why we want to make sure we know how to talk to each other here. And when our visitors come in, we will know how to talk to them and they'll see we know how to talk to each other. When the visitors come and God asks to this family while we're planting and watering, God bringing increase, they'll say, well, they know how to talk to you in there. They talk right to you. Nobody talking out the side of their neck. Nobody talking slick. Nobody putting you down. Nobody putting you out. We, we're going to pick people up. We're going to pick people up. That's what we're doing. In the church and out. When they're coming in, we want to pick them up. Because we know how to talk. What's the next thing? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. 
of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Uh, the grief here is just interpreting as it is. There's nothing deep about this text. It's simple. Do not make the Holy Spirit sad. Don't sadden the Holy Spirit by moving contrary. What we just talked about, speaking proper words. You, you know, sometimes when you get ready to say some things to people, you know already <laughs> you are not said. You know before you say it. You know before the words ever move from your lips as they're forming in your mind. Everything in your mind while they are forming is telling you don't say it. Watch the grieving of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it anyway. That's grieving because the Holy Spirit, you sadden the Spirit because He's told you. And it's not some kind of uh, spooky thing, the Holy Spirit talking to you. He's never audible. We know that. But He talks to you through your knowledge of discernment, He talks to you through your uh, relationship with God and your wisdom and your acquaintance with the Word of God. Good to see my nephew on here. L loving you, nephew. Praying for you and your loss, man. Praying for you and your loss, my brother. Uh, so God bless you and your whole Patterson family. Just had to drop that in there real quick. Um, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. He's the one that's holding on to you till Jesus Christ comes. His responsibility, his job is to hold on to you until Jesus Christ comes. His job, his responsibility is to stand beside you until Christ comes. His job and his responsibility is to keep you cleansed, keep you whole until the Lord comes. He says, don't buck me in what I'm trying to do. Don't make my job hard. I could give you a biblical verse and it might just, it, it might 747 you. Because there's a plurality in the text, but I'm going to strain the text for this verse right here. When the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews 13, verse, uh, verse 17, um, obey them that have the rule over you and do not make their jobs grievous for they watch out for your soul. In all probability, he's talking about the elders. I, I don't have no problem with that. But can you just... Strain that text to see the power of the Holy Spirit in that scripture. I just want you to just let your mind move for a moment. Because it's plurality in the text. So we know there's a multiple persons. It could be the shepherds. It could be singular and ideal, but just spoken to the multiple persons of authority over you. That text has a lot of different moving parts in it. I don't have time to break that down. Obey them that have the rule over you and do not make their work hard or laborious or laborious because they watch out for your soul. Now watch this. Watch coming back to our scripture. Obey the Holy Spirit for he watches out for your soul. <laughs> And do not make his job hard because he's responsible for you. See, when we can get to obeying the Holy Spirit because we know he's watching out for our soul and we can't make his job hard, we have better workings with men that are moving over us because they're caring for our soul. We haven't yet learned how to follow the Holy Spirit no wonder, and I spoke out to Antonio because it just happened, but we got, we got uh, my wife's grandmother in there, Sister Cow, and just lost Brother Cow, so we want to keep that family in prayer already, always as well, just as dear and just as near to the death, so keep that family in prayer. I had to do that. I don't usually do shout outs in the middle of class, but I'm looking at both of their names side by side, and, and to see them still in class, still worshiping, still going on. Even though their hearts are heavy, God bless the both of you. May he anoint you with a fresh anointing of comfort in this particular hour. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. 
because he's watching out for your soul. Don't go against it. Don't fight the power that be. Don't fight the power that be. And the Holy Spirit is that power. Don't fight him. Don't make his job hard. But look what it says then. We got to get ready to get out of here. Here's the hard part. This is where y'all going to wrestle right here. This is where all y'all going to get mad at me. But don't do it. Just look at your Bible. Don't even look at me. Verse number 31. Let all bitterness be put away from you. It doesn't matter where the bitterness came from. Let all bitterness. I'm in verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4. Let all bitterness be put away from you. Uh, a bitter heart. We talked about that thief a little while ago. Let no man steal, but let every man labor. A bitter spirited person robs people, steals from people the peace and the joy that God would have for them. Bitterness, watch this, as much as it hurts other people, it hurts you. When you're a bitter person at heart, when you're a bitter person in spirit, you can't enjoy the, the, the peace of God. <laughs> you can't enjoy the peace of God when you, when you are a bitter person. You can't enjoy the joy of God. And you won't let anybody else around you jo enjoy it neither. But he says, let all bitterness be put away from you. Watch this. All wrath, you know what wrath is? Wrath is a torching condemnation anger. You know, the anger that says, I could kill them. I wish, I just wish a, a train would hit them. I, I wish they would get, I just wish they would die. I wish God would come and zap them and take them away right now. That's wrath. You want to know what wrath looks like in the Bible to show you that I'm not telling you anything wrong. When Christ was on his way to the cross, all the scourgings, the beatings, y'all remember that? You, re you remember the passion, how they was tearing meat out of Christ's back, tearing his, his muscles from his bones, snatching chunks out of him. For the sin, my sin, for your sin, for their sin, my sin, your sin, our sin, their sin, that beating, they're punching Christ, they're slapping him, pulling his beard out of his face, unfiltered. That's the wrath. Of God being poured out on Christ for what sin makes God feel like because Christ was bearing the sins of the world even to the place of death that's the full wrath of God for sin I want you to have that picture because the apostle says put away wrath so wrath makes you feel like you can do some bad things to people and you want to see bad things happen to people with a, a, a fierceness that surpasses anger. He says, put away all wrath. I don't care who it is. Greater Heights and all you visitors, family and friends, whoever you are, that person or persons that you just can't stand and you just wish something would happen to him, pray God remove that spirit from your heart tonight. Pray God replace that spirit with grace and compassion. I know it's going to hurt you to let them off the hook. <laughs> Nobody wants to let anybody off the hook that's been, that's been so painful to you and, and can anger you to the death of you.
the depth, D-P-T-H of you. That kind of anger doesn't just go away, but the Paul says that kind of wrath has got to go away. And if you have that one person, uh, those two persons that uh, that just, just, just get to you, ask God to remove that spirit. He'll anoint you. Uh, a caregiver. Yes, yes, Jackie. We all, and you know what? We always pray for you, sister. You know that. We pray for you openly for your patience and, and anybody else is doing what you're doing. We watched you with grandma. We watched you with mom. Now we're watching you. With, we know you need patience and we're praying for you, sister. We are, we are always praying for you. Sister Mary stayed there with uh, uh, brother John, my wife's grandfather John, all these days and sometimes she just, just grab her head, go upstairs, take a deep breath, get on her knees, say a prayer and come back. <laughs> Because it can be tough. My sister Michelle, yes, remove it. Ask God right now, all of you right now who's got that one person that brings wrath out of you. And you don't even want to see them live. Ask God to remove it from you. Let it go. Lay it down. Then he says, anger. Wrath, bitterness, wrath, anger. They're in order, but they're going in reverse because anger leads to wrath and continuous wrath, a continually anger person that want to see people do stuff can become bitter. Might not always show, but I don't have to be bitter to you, uh, Sister Mary. I have to be bitter to you, Jackie, to be a bitter person, but other people can see me around to my, oh, that's a bitter man. He's always uptight. See, bitterness don't have to show everybody. Yes, Brother John, we're going to pray for you and your family for the loss of your auntie. We're going to ask God to comfort you and your family with the comfort uh, necessary in these hours. Slander. That goes all the way back up to here. He's, he's recapping some things now. Put away all slander. Slander can be a truth but you're speaking these words to the detriment of somebody else's well-being or character is slander see somebody taught you slander was speaking bad things about people or wrong things or untruth we think because they're truthful you can speak them no if you're defaming somebody's character you're assassinating somebody's character if you're putting them down and putting them out, that's slander. See, I, we think that if I tell you a truth about somebody and it makes you cringe the next time you see them, it's not slander because I told you the truth. That's slander. Stop talking about people. No matter how truthful it is, it's slander. You're assassinating that person. The Bible calls it murder with your tongue. Replacing love with all that is bad as absolute, as absolute, Sister Barber. Replacing love, put away from you, put away from you along with all mal malice, slander, and all malice. Now, malice uh, is kin to wrath, it is kin to anger, it's kin to bitterness, but malice is now not that just you want something bad to happen with them, not that you're just a bitter person, not that you talk about people, but now malice means you work behind the scenes and co covertly in a malicious fashion to have people undone. I set the stage. Uh, I, I set the, I orchestrate things to your demise. That's what malice does. Uh, I orchestrate things to, to overpower you or to bring you down. I work with like the puppet with the string. I pull strings to make your life 
a calamity. That's what malice does. You, you sit so well. I'm, I, 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 I want to get you. I can't get you. But I can set you up to be got. Malice. The apostle says put all of these things away. Put all of it away. Not just these things. But all of that thing. Put it away. 755. Please get your prayers. I saw Brother John asking for prayers for his family and the passing of his aunt. We already seen uh, my nephew Antonio on there. We want to keep his uh, family in prayer. We know the services for Brother Floyd is this Saturday at 10 o'clock, beginning at 10 o'clock at the Church of Christ at the Boulevard. We want to keep Sister Mary Collin and all that family. That's in my wife, Tamika, as well, and uh, her mother, Cheryl, at the passing of her father, Brother John Collin. We want to keep that family in prayer as well. Also, like my Jackie, my sister Jackie uh, uh, spoke, keep her in prayer uh, as she carry gifts, and God continue to give her the strength and the patience. Also, this person didn't even ask me to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. They can get mad at me later. Keep uh, our dear friend of our family, a good close person that congregates with us, uh, and in prayer as she deals with some uh, uh, some things that are troubling her and, and challenging her peace. Keep her in prayer as well during these times that she can be still and be moved by the guidance of God and, and that he can just have control over her. Trey, we're going to pray for our sister Trey uh, for traveling grace as she makes her way back home tomorrow. We want to keep everybody in prayer uh, for uh, the trunk or treat this coming Sunday. We'll talk about that Sunday. But also Friday, we got the cleanup. So we, please, Friday, if you're not doing anything, and you can just take a little bit of time. You don't got to come down there and stay all day. If everybody pitch in and everybody come and do something, this won't be an all-day thing. You don't got to come and clean the whole building. We're cleaning a, por a particular portion where we need to be cleaned at. And if you come and do a part and do something, we can get on out of there. We don't really have to be there because we're going to come back at another time, a few of us, and we're going to shampoo everything that we need to be shampooing. But if you come on down there and help us clean, help us vacuum, help us uh, wipe down, help us to wash out, uh, we can get this done and get out of there and, and go and enjoy the rest of our Friday evening. But we're asking everybody. That's right, teamwork. We're asking everybody to just come down and do something. 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, hour, two hours. You want to stay the whole time? Stay the whole time. You got Wendy's right there, McDonald's, a pizza place, and a Chinese restaurant. All in walking distance. So if you get hungry, go get you something to eat. Come on back, and we can still uh, get this clean party working. Uh, make this block rock. <laughs> we can rock the block uh, on Friday while we clean up this building and get this building uh, ready uh, for our entrance. So uh, got Councilman Mike Dudley on there. God bless you. Uh, the time that we're going to be at that building, I believe, is from 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock. From 3 in the afternoon to 8 o'clock or to whenever it's done, uh, to whenever you can stay. Again, no pressure for you to be there the whole time. You, you can't come too late. Uh, just come and do something. Uh, come and clean off a doorknob and wipe a door down, and we'll bless you for that. We'll thank God that you came and do that. So just come on down there and be with us. Another chance for the saints to be together. If you want to wear a mask, wear your mask. If you want to wear gloves, we'll have gloves. Whatever the case may be, just come on down. Another chance for the family to be together and just chop it up. So it's just going to be a good time no matter what. Be there or be square. We're going to ask you to come out and be with us. Uh, we just thank God for each and every last one of you. Uh, let me tell you that again. Thank God for each and every last one of you. Now, I don't tell you this often. I'm going to tell you to your face when I see you Sunday. If the Lord bless me, I love you all and I thank God for you all. And I'm always praying for you all. Let's go to God in the word of prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We just 
so all at the greatness of your work and the mightiness of your all power. Help us, O oh Lord, in our feeble way to put off some of these old things and put on this new man, these new character, these new personality and behaviors that we can be the light to the world and be a, a united family. These things make us stronger with one another and it builds our love and trust one for another. When we learn how to talk with each other, not talk about each other, not to be angry or bitter with one another, but tenderhearted and kind. We thank you, Lord, for every person under the sound of my voice. We have multiple family members who have lost loved ones. God, we have multiple family members and friends who have lost loved ones. We ask you to comfort them and their families, not just tonight, but in all the nights to come, be a source of comfort. And as their family, may we comfort them as well. We have family members who are being challenged in their health. Brother Ben, Sister Cotton, and my mother we have right out front, we want to pray for them. Uh, Brother Darren Stewart, as he's making his way in recovery, we're praying, Father, that you strengthen them in their bodies and that we be there for their support and strengthening as well. Again, the names are too many uh, for me to remember, but Sister Michelle Brooks and the Bostic family, Brother John McGinney and his family, Antonio Patterson and the family by Brother Floyd Patterson, uh, Sister Cowan and uh, uh, the, the passing of Brother John Cowan. I, I know I'm going to miss somebody. Somebody's going to be angry. God, please make intercession in my behalf. Thank you for your love. Continue to bless this congregation. Uh, bless this congregation that she may be the greater height and strive to reach the heights that you set for the church to reach. And we know we can do all things by the Christ Jesus that strengthens us. Forgive us for all of our sins. Cleanse us for all of our unrighteousness and continue to anoint us with the daily presence of your mercy and your grace as we strive to walk in your truth. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior and your Son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Yeah, uh, yeah, brother. Uh, yes, councilman. I'll get that information to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. God bless you too. Thank you for joining us this evening. Y'all, y'all always know if y'all got any questions for me, y'all can always shoot me a messenger. Y'all can always shoot me a text. You can always call me. You know that. So God bless you all. And please have a blessed evening. God bless you.